And the nominees for best new YouTube channel are Wyoming Girl 23, XX Mega Chew Man XX, The Film Theorists, UC Lowercase O IV5145 EBN Lowercase C Lowercase F8. The winner is UC Lowercase O underscore IV5145 EBN Lowercase C Lowercase F8. Totally deserved it. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, where the true prize is knowledge. Ah, who the f*** am I kidding? Give me that $120,000 gift bag already. Oh, don't worry, Angelina Jolie. You can keep your $250 laser vibrator, the luxury condom, and the $20,000 tarot card reading. I'm only in it for the $4,000 worth of liposuction. This felt figure ain't maintaining itself, my friends. I ain't getting any thinner sitting at my desk making YouTube videos, I'll tell you that much. So if I'm gonna get my gift certificate to Dr. Dave's Fat Vacuum Emporium, I need to figure out a way to win myself an Oscar. But how? Well, the thing to remember is that, like most things in life, the Academy Awards are a game, a system, and as such, there are hacks, exploits, loopholes that begin to show themselves if you look close enough. And that's the job of this show. Look at the facts, figure out the trends so that I can tell you, you win an Oscar, and in the process, finally get your parents to stop hounding you for your theater degree. So, after scouring, 87 years worth of nominee and winner data, believe it or not, each category has its own clear formula for winning. Sure, it's not as exact as 1 plus 1 equals 2, but today we're going to increase your odds tremendously with the help of some hard facts, graphs, and bad jokes courtesy of yours truly. Now, let the odds be ever in your favor. First things first, we gotta get ourselves nominated. But it can't be that hard to get on the ballot, right? right? Well, in order to beat the system, we need to understand the system. There are nearly 6,300 members of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, the guys who are voting to get nominees on the ballot. Those 6,300 are divided into 17 branches. Some branches you would expect, like writers, directors, and actors. Others, like public relations, casting directors, and executives, not so much. They all go through two rounds of voting. The first time, members can only vote in their own category, and this creates a nominee list. And then a month later, everyone votes again, but this time in every category to pick the winners. The one exception to this, Best Picture. Best Picture nominees are voted on by everyone both times. So if you're looking to land a nomination, know who you're playing to. Oscar voters are 94% white, 77% male, and they have a median age of 62. Which means any movie mentioning their favorite childhood pastime of hoops and sticks in the street is gonna get bonus points. Conversely, anything involving modern technology, <coughs> social network, <coughs> may get a nomination just so that the gray hairs voting can look hip and cool, but when it comes to winning, yeah, you're out of luck. They actually had no clue what your movie was about. And to round out our voter statistics, 33% of voting members are former nominees, 14% are former winners, and 22% are actors. Keep that one in mind. Now, you can already start to predict how some of these trends are going to affect our winners, but hold on to your horses, or I suppose if you're John Travolta, hold on to Adele Dezim's face, cause we're gonna go one step deeper and pick apart the awards category by category. And let's start with the biggie, what it takes to win best picture, since, you know, go big or go home. So right off the bat, I have two words for you that will increase your odds of getting a nomination immediately. True story. As we get closer to 2015, movies based on a true story have swept the Oscars. Starting with Million Dollar Baby and going up to 12 Years a Slave, 7 out of 10 Oscar winning movies in the category of best picture belong to the true story group. Actually, you can make it 8 out of 11 because even though it may not say it, Birdman, this year's winner, is also based on a true story. For those of you who haven't seen this pretty artsy film, it's about an actor who used to play the role of an animal themed superhero before his career petered out. The movie then follows his quest to revive it. Now switch to the true story element. The movie stars Michael Keaton, who played Batman, 
an animal-themed superhero before his career just kinda petered out. Now he's old and is using this movie to try and revive his career. That is far more based on a true story than old Plastic Baby over here. Well, Plastic Baby brings up a good point. Look at what else was nominated. Practically all of them were based on real lives. American Sniper, the story of US Navy SEAL sharpshooter Chris Kyle, the imitation game about wartime codebreaker Alan Turing, Stephen Hawking biopic The Theory of Everything, Selma about Martin Luther King's civil rights marches, Boyhood, which may not have been based on a true story, but did feature 12 years of a real growing up family experience, and Whiplash, whose story was inspired by the director's time spent playing in a very competitive jazz band. I would make a joke about very competitive jazz bands as like, ooh, watch out, that muted trumpet's gonna get ya, but I was in a very competitive show choir throughout high school, so I feel like I have no room to judge. But look at that nominee list! It leaves Grand Budapest Hotel as the only purely fictional movie nominated this year. Let's go back to last year. American Hustle, Captain Phillips, Dallas Buyers Club, Philomena, 12 Years a Slave, and The Wolf of Wall Street. Again, all based on true stories. That is six out of nine. It's an incredibly powerful trend right now. But if you want to go the extra mile and really ensure your chance at a golden statue, don't just make it a true story. Make it a true story that occurred during the Holocaust. Schindler's List, about a Nazi businessman who saves his Jewish workers, was nominated for 12 awards back in 1993, then went on to go home with seven. Meryl Streep received her second Oscar for 1982's Sophie's Choice, about a woman haunted by her time in a concentration camp, and Roman Polanski's The Pianist won three awards in 2002 from the seven categories it was nominated in. In fact, the trend is so strong, get this, when Kate Winslet was a guest star on Ricky Gervais's Extras, this is what she had to say. Now I'm doing it because I've noticed that if you do a film about the Holocaust, guaranteed an Oscar. I've been nominated four times, never won. And the whole world is going, why hasn't Winslet won one? Yeah. So here's a question. Is the joke on us or on Hollywood? Because Kate Winslet finally won her award for her performance in 2009's The Reader, a film about, you guessed it, the Holocaust. She figured out the formula. So clearly people have caught wise onto this period piece based on a sad true story trend and are exploiting the ever-loving bejesus out of it. Thank you very much, Weinsteins. So I'm gonna give you the secret on how to make an award winner that doesn't instantly reek of pandering. Answer me this. What does the Academy love more than World War II? Itself. Remember, the entirety of awards season is about the film industry patting itself on the back, and recently Oscar's ego has only gotten bigger and more shameless. In the last four years, look at what's won the big prize. Movies about how great movies are. And not just movies, but specifically how great actors are. Seriously, three out of the last four Best Picture winners are about how wonderful and important actors are. There's The Artist, about the birth of sound pictures and the struggles silent film actors went through in making the transition. Birdman, whose deeper meaning is a video for another day, but at its core is a commentary on the artistic purity of acting, and most blatantly of all, Argo, about how a bunch of actors saved the CIA by rescuing hostages in Iran. Remember when I said that 22% of the Academy voters are actors? Know your audience, loyal theorists. Know your audience. And it makes even more sense when you look at the other big common thread across Best Picture movies. They're vehicles specifically for the actors. Look at Gravity. It won seven awards, the most awards of 2013. Best Director, Cinematography, Visual Effects, Editing, Score, Sound Editing, and Sound Mixing. Notice that it didn't win any acting awards, and that it didn't win Best Picture, despite having the most awards of the year and the Best Director. How about the year where both Inception and Social Network were nominated? Both big idea movies with cutting-edge effects, unique screenplays, visionary direction, both winning a lot of technical awards, but ultimately losing the big prize to The King's Speech, a period piece spotlighting two of the industry's most beloved actors. Remember when everyone thought that Avatar was a lock for Best Picture because of its cutting-edge use of CGI and 3D? Well, that 22% of the voters didn't take too kindly to computer-animated Smurfs doing the acting for them, and the award went to the small human war drama known as 
the Hurt Locker. Birdman? Yep, a tour de force for its actors talking about acting. You could literally make a drinking game out of this. Okay, so you took my advice and filmed the next Citizen Kane. Well, don't do that since it didn't win despite being hailed as the greatest movie of all time. We'll get there another day. Let me start that again. So, you filmed some shamelessly dramatic period piece with actors chewing the scenery. Congratulations, time to edit the footage. My advice here, don't leave too much on the editing floor since best picture winners tend to be longer than your average film. Your average film over the last decade has been about 85 minutes long. Your Oscar best picture winner is at minimum two hours. Looking at the data, 70% of all best picture winners are longer than two hours. Of the films released after 1960, that number jumps up to 80%. The shortest best picture winner of all time, Marty, was only 91 minutes, and that's very much the exception. Gone with the Wind, Ben-Hur, Lawrence of Arabia all tip the three and a half hour mark if you include the intermissions. Yes, so long that they need intermissions. Return of the King is just under three hours and 21 minutes. In fact, there's definitely a length bias. Oscar voters like to give the award to the longest movie nominated. For each set of nominees, we rank the movies by runtime. The longest nominee has won Best Picture more than 40% of the time. So if you're thinking of making your directors cut anything under four hours, you're doing something wrong, my friends. So, well done. If you followed my advice, at this point you should be holding the perfect Oscar bait masterpiece. But don't drop the ball in the home stretch, you still have to release this thing. And, like in comedy, timing is every. If you want to win an Oscar, release it late in the year. This strategic releasing means that Academy voters are more likely to have a fresh memory of your movie. It's a psychological phenomenon called the recency effect. Plus, the film is still being featured in the press when they're casting the votes. Thing. We took a look at the 97 films nominated at the Oscars between 2000 and 2013. It turns out that 56% of films nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards were first released in the US in either November or December, over half in the last two months of the year. So that's a lot of information. Let's recap. In short, if you want to go balls to the wall and give yourself the absolute best chance at winning an Oscar, find an inspiring true story of a Holocaust victim who was an actor and or director who courageously used that gift to make the world a better place. Then make sure that your stars have nice juicy roles. Keep the runtime above two hours and release it in November. Voila! You have just done everything in your power to optimize your movie to win an Oscar. But you know what, internet? Here on Film Theory, I'm not going to be content just giving you the formula for the most tantalizing Oscar bait. All of you film students watching, I will outright give you the movie you have to make in order to practically guarantee yourself Oscar Gold, the true story of Kurt Duran. Kurt Duran was a German Jewish actor and film director, born into a wealthy merchant family in Berlin. He served in World War I, but after being severely wounded, became a military doctor instead. After the war, he entered the world of theater, starring in the first ever production of The Three Penny Opera, one of the most famous stage pieces you've probably never heard of, originating classic songs that have transcended generations most famously, Mac the Knife. And get this, Kurt Duran was the first ever to perform that song. And as Three Penny achieved international success, Duran's performance of the song became famous across Europe. This propelled him into the world of cinema, starring opposite Marlene Dietrich in 1930's The Blue Angel. But then, shortly thereafter, the Nazis began to take power. Though his actor and director friends offered him an escape to Hollywood, Kurt refused to leave Europe. He was eventually captured by the Nazis and sent to a concentration camp, where he was forced to put together stage cabarets for the German prison guards, including reprising his famous performance of Mac the Knife. In 1944, the Nazis made him direct a propaganda film about the humane conditions of the internment camps, and when the film was finished, Duran was deported to Auschwitz, where he and his troupe of musicians and actors were immediately sent to the gas chambers upon their arrival and killed. And if that wasn't sad enough, in a tragic twist, his train was the last one between his camp and Auschwitz, and the gas chambers were ordered to be closed for good the very day after his execution. Tragic? Certainly. Oscar Gold? 
You bet. Now, when you see this one pop up in the next few years, you know where the idea started. Right here. And you, my friends, were a part of it. And hey, if you're the one making it and you don't win an Oscar, don't come to me, you only have yourself to blame. And if you're interested to see what it takes to win the acting awards, click here to see our episode on those guys, because there are some weird things going on there. The dark, twisted politics of awards season, my friends. It's a strange place. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you over there on that episode, but if not, remember, it's all just a theory, a film theory, and cut. Welcome back to the Super Amazing End Card Tournament, where I encourage you to subscribe because, honestly, I really want this channel to be successful. And if you've made it this far into the video, chances are you liked what you saw. So it only makes logical sense for you to hit that button right now. Right now. Right? Okay, great. Now it's your turn to join the Academy. Cast your vote. Of the following movies, who would you give the Best Picture Award to? Guardians of the Galaxy, Hunger Games Mockingjay, The Hobbit Battle of Five Armies, or Interstellar? Are you gonna go with the super popular Guardians? The tween age hit Katniss? The really long conclusion to the really long trilogy of movies to the really short book, The Hobbit? Or Interstellar, where the fifth dimension is love? Click on one to choose, be taken to the channel page, check out some more of our new videos, and hopefully, hopefully, let me plug it one more time, you should probably subscribe.